Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about fundamental questions part 2. We already have discussed up to 28 and let's start from 29. So open source and licensed so uh, software, which one you are going to prefer? Definitely see here what is happening. Uh, you know, uh, the difference between open source and licensed software is that licensed software is keep updating, right? And that's a very easy to track for any organization. Whereas the open source, you don't know uh, to whom uh, you are going to contact, right? And whether that will that will solve your problem or not. But in licensed software, what is happening? You can easily track those people who can actually help you. So that's why licensed software is much better than open source software. What is DNS? So DNS is nothing but it's a domain name system turns domain names into IP addresses, which browsers use to load uh, internet pages. Well, uh, let's say example, uh, you are writing www.google.com, then definitely uh, DNS is responsible who uh, there is a domain name and it is converting into the IP address because computer can't understand domain, right? Now how DNS works, you can directly go through this youtube.com, this channel and you can go through uh, this blog, how DNS dot works, right? So you can go through these two links and that will be uh, much better and you will get to know that how actually it works. Now what is TLD? So a top level domain, domain sorry. So it is uh, the most generic domain in the internet hierarchical or DNS. So a TLD is the final component of a domain name. Let's, let's take an example, right? So if there is something uh, you can say google.com, right? So this .com, com right so this com is one of the tld that is a top level domain and let's say here is an example i have given developer.mozilla.org right so that org is one of the tld so this is what top level domain what is name server name server is uh, responsible to convert or you can say translate the domain name into an ip addresses so name server let's say there is a www.google.com right so name server is responsible to convert www.google.com into 8.8.8.8 right so this is what we are uh, we have name server a canonical name so a canonical name or we can say typical c name is a type of domain name system database record that indicates that domain name is the nickname or allies for another domain name so let's take an example there is a, a website uh, we have example.com right and there is the uh, three subdomains the uh, let's say w1 uh, example.com w2 example.com W3 and uh, you are a uh, you are a owner of that example.com and you want all these subdomain should uh, show the example.com whenever user go through w1.example.com then uh, the, uh, that should be redirect to example.com right so this is what a canonical name that actually uh, you are using some uh, some other thing but once you will uh, uh, enter into it that is going to somewhere else uh, from the same page so this is what a canonical name uh, which indicates that a domain name is the nickname or we can say allies for another domain name okay now what details you find when you searched ip domain for dns lookup so you can search any any type of ip right uh, on dns lookup you can search for that and you will find out that here a double a double a s o a name server you will find more details as well right so now what a exactly it is what is that a a will uh, denotes you know the ipv4 address double a double a will denotes you uh, 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 it will show you ipv6 addresses s a o a it means uh, uh, start of authority right so here you will get the administrator uh, email id uh, when when was the last date uh, when that IP was updated or something else, right? Name server definitely you will get uh, with the help of this DNS lookup. There will be more components as well, but you will have to uh, find out. You will have to search on that DNS lookup uh, because this question definitely ask uh, many many interview interviewer ask this question. Now what is DSCP? DSCP generally we we all know that it is used to uh, you know assign the IP addresses to a host. 
basically uh, in an organization or wherever right and it uh, works on the concept of dora right dora means uh, discovery right firstly you are there is a client and server so client will be discover then uh, server is going to offer a ip address right and uh, you can say uh, request r4 request uh, again client is going to request it then server is uh, acknowledging it to the client that's work uh, that's how it works on concept of dora what is cv which authority generate cv cv is nothing but you know common vulnerabilities and exposures whenever there is some some unique vulnerabilities or something vulnerabilities happen and there is no numbers of cv then uh, definitely uh, there is an authority which we call cv number authority that is cna they assign one, one of the unique cv to a particular vulnerability what is a loopback address loopback address is nothing but it's uh, you know uh, your default routers you know you have the router having the ip 127.0.0.1 which is called a loopback address generally we use uh, uh, these pack, uh, these things uh, to check our tcp ip protocols whether it's working or not so packets sent to this address never reach the network but are looped through the network interface card only now a uh, difference between thread and process so a process is a program under execution right uh, that is an active program a thread uh, is a lightweight process that can be managed independently by a scheduler so process definitely process requires more time for context switching as they are more heavy why they are heavy because there are multiple threads uh, in a process there can be a multiple threads but a thread is definitely a very single one so definitely it will take less time because it's very lightweighted now what is the difference between thread and services so service is a component of android which performs long running operation in background okay i think uh, we also saw, have seen uh, service in uh, windows as well right so you can search for that uh, as well now thread is a os level feature that allows you to do some operation in the background what is kerberos kerberos is very important kerberos is a computer network authentication protocol that works on the basis of tickets to allow nodes communicating over a non secure network to prove their identity to one another in a secure manner so let's let's take an example here uh, you know uh, you might have heard or you might have seen SSO single sign on right so what was the logic behind that who is working behind that SSO so Kerberos is uh, is behind that SSO and he uh, Kerberos is uh, working it because uh, Kerberos is responsible to authenticate for the third party that yeah, he is the right person who is accessing the single sign on uh, you might have seen what is 0x18 okay 0x12 as well in Kerberos authentication so now what exactly it is so 0x12 clients credential have been revoked it means account disabled expired may be logged out or maybe log on hours and what about the failure code 0x18 it means that account was already disabled or logged out when the client attempted to authenticate what is kernel so kernel is the essential center or you can say the uh, the heart of the uh, os you can say so computer operating system it is the core that provide the basic services for all other parts of the os so it is the main layer between the os and hardware and it helps uh, with the process of and uh, memory management file system device control networking ldap ldap generally works on port number 389 and it is a tool for extracting the editing data stored in active directory and other compatible direct uh, directory service providers and each user account in an entity has several attributes such as the you know the user full name and email address etc etc et <clears throat> sorry so now what is salted hash now uh, why we are using salted uh, salted hash we already have the hash well hash can be cracked with the help of you know a rainbow table maybe the with the help of collisions so that's why we are adding some extra uh, uh, you can say extra data or you can say the extra character uh, in the hashes so that it can be secured now what is brute force attack how you will mitigate it so it tries various combination maybe there will be a list of user and password and it will repeatedly uh, use it until and unless it is get in 
right so this repetitive action is like an army attacking a fort so mitigation what is the mitigation you can limit the login attempts right you can enable two factor, uh, two factor authentication you can use captchas and you can also block the malicious ip what are encoding hashing and encryption so encoding is nothing but it converts the data into the desired uh, format required for action between the different system let's say for example base 64 hashing so hashing is nothing but it means is the integrity of a message data we have already talked about this and we also talked about the encryption that it ensures the data is secure and one need is a digital verification code for image in order to open it or access it so it it shows the confidentiality it shows the integrity what are the tcp header flags and what they do so sin os uh, sek push rst and fin so sin means synchronize right urgent means is there is a, any urgent uh, packets you can uh, directly call it acknowledge it shows that that yeah the packet has been reached push we can push the packet reset reset means uh, uh, the connection has been reset and fin means the connection has been terminated what is three-way TCP handshaking? So that's basically a very easy one. If there is a client server, so client is sending SYN. Uh, for uh, SYN means it initiating the communication, right? And server is sending SYN plus uh, ACK. It's initiation of uh, communication plus it has acknowledged that your yeah, client has sent the initiation request. And then client is saying, yeah, I got it. And he's sending the acknowledged packet and the communication is established now what is vlan virtual lan means what what is the difference between vpn and vlan so vpn it is related to remote access to a network with the secure and encrypted tunnel basically there is a encryption uh, encrypted tunnel through which we communicate uh, from one one uh, pc to the server or maybe to the second uh, pc uh, that is very secure and is it saves the data from a uh, prying eye while in transit and no one uh, on the net can capture the packets vlan helps to group workstation that are not within the same location into the same broadcast domain logically segregates network without physical segregation with switches so it does not involve any encryption so here the data you know uh, so basically it's always in the local so it is not going to uh, having the encryption uh, now the difference between proxy and VPN so there is a minor difference you know VPN uh, use the encryption whereas proxy it just uh, VPN is also hiding your IP a proxy is also hiding your IP but VPN uses using a encrypted tunnel through which uh, your communication is happened whereas the proxy not so this is what the basic difference between these two uh, difference between reverse proxy and forward proxy so the main difference between the two is that forward proxy is uh, used by the client right so let's say you are the, you are the client and server is not knowing your ip address right uh, and reverse proxy proxy is just a uh, uh, reverse of that such that uh, server server having a particular ip and he is using the proxy uh, but the client can't able to know where, uh, from which server he is actually uh, getting the data so that's what reverse proxy now ssl versus tls how ssl works which one is better well you can say tls is the elder brother of ssl because tls is more secure right uh, ssl is a secure socket layer and tls is you can say okay let's uh, firstly uh, check it ssl so it is a protocol that enables safe conversation between two or more patients it is designed to identify and verify that the person you are talking to on the other end is who they save say they are right for example let's say https right that uses the ssl and tls is one our transport layer security which is also one of the uh, cryptographic protocol and that provides authentication data encryption between uh, you can say server machines and application ssl is the predecessor to tls and they can be used together so this is the whole process of ssl handshake process you can just read out these uh, these things i'm not going to discuss these things because i have already written here uh, definitely TLS is more better than SSL. Now, what is the difference between virus, worms, and trojan malware? So now uh, let me uh, clear it in a very short form. Now, vir virus can uh, affect a particular system, and it can, uh, you know, uh, it can make a replica uh, of its own. 
whereas the worm can uh, can have the tendency of virus but it can uh, affect the whole network as well now trojan trojan is one of the thing in which uh, there is legitimate things is going uh, i mean there is there will be some malware which is looks like a legitimate but it is not legitimate and for that for a uh, trojan victim have to click somewhere victim have to click then only the trojan is going to install uh, then it is going to work so for trojan we need a uh, victim uh, uh, you can say the victim uh, should have click on that okay so there will be no self replicate replicating definitely now what is the chain of custody so for legal cases uh, the data device uh, needs to be integrated hence any access need to be undocumented who what when and why compromise in this process can cause legal issues for the parties involved so uh, generally if let's say if there is some something happened in your office and if there is some data then they can take uh, that laptop in the chain of custody they will investigate all those things so this is what we call chain of custody so that's it guys uh, in this uh, I, we have covered the whole fundamental questions which uh, we uh, which i have seen uh, in many interviews which uh, i have talked to my junior and my senior uh, and they have helped me in that to making this uh, course making this uh, you know a whole 55 questions of related to fundamental questions so that's it in this video and we'll meet in next video with the OSI model layer questions. Bye-bye.